The NDP released its budget for 2020 under what Finance Minister Carol James calls challenging times. And while James says the government's focus is making life more affordable for British Columbians, we'll most really see cost savings. Joining us now is Everything Financial CEO Peter Sashecki. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. So can we just, I just want to know, when you deal with your clients, are they aware of the sort of annual changes that take place in a, in a budget? They are. We give them an update as most advisors should, just to let them know what tax bracket they're in, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't go through every minuscule change in a budget and say how that's gonna affect your life, because you can't figure it out half the time if that's not what you do for a living. But just knowing what tax bracket you're in and how that's going to affect what you take home, that's important. Yeah, and so some of the things that were brought up in the budget uh, are going to impact a lot of people. Uh, so let's start with uh, taxes increasing, and in, in particular for the top 1%, the, the top earners. That's right. If you're making over $220,000, you just saw a 25% increase. So let's not sugarcoat it because they say oh, it went from 16 to 20.8%, etc. Well, what it really means is for the top income earners, we're just two basis points behind Nova Scotia as the top tax in the country. We're paying more than anybody else. So we're paying 16 and a half and well, now it's 20 and a half. Now it's 20. So it's an increase and, of 4%. And then you add that on to the federal rate at the top rate of 33%. We're almost at 54%. And that doesn't create jobs because the top income earners are the ones who create jobs. Well, if you've just taken a 25% bite out of their pocketbooks, less jobs are going to be created, less money is going back into the system. But you can't be suggesting that people who are not top earners be, you know, burdened with paying additional taxes. I mean, people who are top income earners, they have the money to be able to they, do that. They have the money to do it, but it, it doesn't work when you, when you raise taxes so high, the economy slows. And that's what we've seen the last few years. As taxes in all brackets in this province have continually gone up, our economies slowed. Now, is that a coincidence, a correlation? Who knows, but it seems to be, if you look back in time, that's always the way. Okay, let's talk about some of the uh, education grants, uh, new ones for students, and they can be eligible for grants up to $4,000. That's right, so we're going to pay for kids to go to school. And I'm not saying we can't help kids and help with grants, but there also has to be some planning involved. As, as things have been proven, if you actually have to work and have a part-time job and participate in part of paying for your education, you'll be a more productive earner in society. It can't just all be given or enabled. You have to work for some of that education. But parents are typically the ones that are saving and paying for their children that's, to go to school. So those grants correct. will help They will parents. help. And, and parents can't lose sight of the great program that's there. There is the BC Education Savings Grant, which you have to fall into a certain bracket, but it is there. Make sure you apply for it. There is RESPs, which are done there with the, with the grants being given by the federal government. Make sure those two are part of your plan because $4,000 is great, but it's not going to get you through a full education. You have to do your own part in your plan to make sure you save money as well. Tuition is extremely expensive. I think we it can is. all agree on that. Um, okay, let's talk quickly about the BC Child Opportunity Benefit. What is that? I guess it depends how much money you make, right? It, it depends how much money you make. And, and the people who theoretically will get that are the people who really need it. And, and people are asking me already, as early as this morning, a few emails about, well, what should I do with that money if I get it? Should I put it towards an RESP? Because then people are thinking education, should I put it towards this? When things like that come to you, you probably really need it. Mm -hmm. Look at what you're doing in your own house to make sure you can just get from paycheck to paycheck, because that could be some very needed money. So do you suggest that people take their money, and just for her people's interest, uh, 1600 for a family's first child, and that's the maximum that someone can get, depending on what their income is. You recommend that they invest that money? Is that the best thing that they can do with that? Not at first. Okay. Look at your own household economy, your own budget and cash flow in your house. You may need that money just to prevent from living paycheck to paycheck. Okay. Pay yourself first then look at the investing. Good advice. Peter, thank you for joining us this thank morning. Thank you.